Hello, Sandra here. Today I'm so excited because I am about to go to Two Friends Books, which is a local indie bookshop here in Northwest Arkansas with my baby sister. I'm so excited. There's one book I have in mind that's based in Northwest Arkansas that I wanna pick up. It's called Come and Get It. Hopefully I can get a copy of it. Um, the author was in town last night at the Fayetteville Public Library. And today I've been putting together my reading room slash office. So I have just a bunch of bookish things that I have had ready to hang on the wall for a while now and those are still there so hopefully those get up on the wall and then I've been putting together another little bookshelf and stuff so yeah today is very productive and creative and I'm having a good time anywho I'm gonna go meet up with my sister and hopefully we have some good finds <laughs> It's always weird when you're hanging out with someone and you want to do like a little video footage. You want to be sensitive of everyone's boundaries. My footage was ultra short. I spent five hours at Two Friends Books. There were so many people there. Shout out to Blake who works in the shop. He was so fun. I feel like every time I've been in Two Friends, Blake is working. He knows everything about everything. Like you can talk to him about video games, about whatever book that you bring to the checkout counter. He has probably read it or at least knows what it's about. He's so knowledgeable. I have to give major props to Two Friends Bookshop. I got three books today. I did find the book that I set out to find, Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. There were a couple boxes of that book hauled into the shop today. And then by the time Taylor and I left the shop, someone had called and bought up like the last handful of the copies. Taylor and I both got signed copies and we're so excited. I thought I would turn this more into a book haul because I've gotten so many books lately and I haven't really shared what they are. And so I acquired several books today and I've bought a few books on my Kindle as well. I thought I would share what some of those are. I'm still trying to decide what's gonna be like my next read and I don't really know what I'm in the mood for so maybe I'll do a video trying to find out what my next read will be. I'm kind of in a book slump honestly after Tara and I covered all of SJM's books over on the Story Darlings podcast so I am booked out but anyways I will show you the three books that I got at Two Friends. As I said here's the first book that I got today, Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. I didn't get to see her talk and signing at the Fayetteville Public Library last night unfortunately but I was so happy to get a signed copy. This book is actually set where I live in Northwest Arkansas. Of course, I'm gonna pick up the book and read it. I don't think it's a romance or anything like that. I think it's just a literary fiction. Acclaimed author Kylie reads fresh and provocative story about desire, consumption, and bad behavior. I like going to books blind, like that didn't really tell me much. But here we go, here's her signature. Book cover is so beautiful. Look at that book. Look at that blue and that green. I got a lot of like, blue and green books today. I don't know what, but so there's Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. The second book that I got was totally an impulse buy. That time I got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf by Kimberly Lemming. This guy, <laughs> I was talking to a bookstagram friend, Michael, and he mentioned that it looked like Asterian got another romance story. That's exactly what went through my mind when I saw this cover is if you play Baldur's Gate 3, this character on the front cover looks like the vampire character Asterian from BG3, which is hilarious because he's like one of the most entertaining characters in the game. That title alone and the art, I was like, curiosity peaked. So I looked at the back and I didn't want to read too much because, you know, spoilers a lot of times. All I read was, Cheesemaker Brie has the world's worst luck in love, which is how she ends up falling for a lactose intolerant werewolf in this raunchy, laugh out loud tale by the new star of rom-com fantasy. This sounds cozy and fun and I'm all about that so maybe this will be my next pick I don't know we'll see and then my next book was something I have heard wonderful things about it is just a romance called the kiss quotient by Helen Hong I know absolutely nothing about it except that I feel like everyone who has read her books or read this book has really, really enjoyed this one. And I believe this was her debut book. It just says, a heartwarming and refreshing debut novel that proves one thing, there's not enough data in the world to predict what will make your heart tick. It kind of reminds me of Allie Hazelwood, like STEM and romance kind of combined together. I love Allie Hazelwood's books for the most part. So I'm definitely excited to check this one out. February is a month of love. Maybe I'll check this one out this month. And then these were a couple that I acquired in the last couple weeks here. This one actually won off of Goodreads and the publisher sent me this one, Novelist as a Vocation by Haruki Murakami. 
I am obsessed with reading books about writing as a craft. So Stephen King's on writing, I love that. Whether they cover line editing, story structure, fleshing out characters, rules of grammar, so that you know how to break the rules. I'm really looking forward to this one. This is a type of book that I love, love, love to read. So I'm excited to get into this one. And then the other one I acquired was Lord of the Fading Lands, which I really know nothing about. I got an email from the publisher because I have received other arcs that they have published in the past. This one sounded right up my alley as well, how it was pitched to me. It's actually been out previously, but they re-released them, I think, under a traditional publishing house. This one is like a romantic style, and like I said, I like to go into them completely blind. Lord of the Fading Lands sounded like a good series to get into, so I'm excited about this one too. Next is an author that I am absolutely delighted to read, especially in the wintertime. So Hannah Long is an author. She was one of the very first advanced reader copies that I ever received a few years ago from NetGalley, and it was for her debut novel, Hall of Smoke. I loved Hall of Smoke. It had some major Skyrim vibes with the main protagonist. She always features really strong women in it, lots of good epic action, really cool magic systems, and it always has a very wintry type of atmosphere, which I really love. This book here closes out her first series, Pillar of Ash, which this one recently came out here at the start of the year, and so I'm excited to read this one. Winter is the perfect time to read H.M. Long's books. I've done reviews on this channel for Hall of Smoke and Borrow of Winter. She also has Temple of No God, which was her second book. And then last year she released the first book in a new series, the Winter Sea series called Dark Water Daughter, which I read in the summer and absolutely loved. It was a swashbuckling adventure with a light, light thread of romance in it. And it was just so much fun. And that one actually has a sequel, Black Tide Sun, coming out this summer. H.M. Long, I really enjoy her books and her covers on these are so, so beautiful. This is King of Wrath by Anna Huang and I started reading Anna Huang probably in the last two months or so. I was reading her Twisted Love, Twisted Games, like that quartet that she has that make appearances in that series. I really enjoy it. They're very bingeable books and sometimes that's what I need as a palate cleanser and they're, they're just really entertaining and I just eat them up like popcorn. So King of Wrath, this is one I'm excited to get into. I got Legendary today, which is the sequel to Caraval by Stephanie Garber, which has been recommended to me by several different people on Bookstagram. I rated Caraval three stars. It started off really strong. I love the atmosphere. I love the writing. But the longer that I read the book, the quicker that I found out that I wasn't going to get a lot of answers that I had about what was motivating certain characters to behave pretty much evil. It was almost like a cartoony villain type of thing that I didn't really like like in the story that took me out of it and then it really really irked me that there was no way to pretty much anticipate what was happening behind the scenes because every twist and development was something that you could never guess it happened off page if you will so there was no like finding the clues and figuring out what it was before it was like spoon fed to you at the end exactly what was happening I was very disappointed in that sense but I did like the writing it was fast paced so I read it really quickly and then my completionist brain wants to give it another chance to read the sequel and see if I get some answers to some of the questions that I had in the first book. So we'll see. A Legendary by Stephanie Garber. And then I picked up two sequels to a book that I have not read yet. I received Red Rising like three years ago from Monique. Thank you, Monique. I'm going to read Red Rising very soon, near future. I've heard amazing things about the series. I picked up Golden Sun and Morning Star because I don't like to wait between books after finishing them. So I have Red Rising over on the shelf and hopefully I read that one soon. I've heard it's a little dark and grittier, which I haven't, I feel like I haven't read a dark gritty one in a while. So I'm looking forward to it. Also received today is Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. And I've heard mixed things about this book. It's essentially a serial killer romance where they're both serial killers. So in like a good way where they kill just the bad people. So it's not super dark that way, but I have heard it's pretty gory. So it says on on the back, the viral friends to lovers dark romantic comedy full of murder, chaos, and sizzling chemistry. That sounds like a combination of things that I would enjoy. And then another book that I got a little bit ago is Gothicana. And this was a book that I believe was indie published first, and then it was re-released under Bramble Romance here. And it's a beautiful edition. Like it has these dark purple stained edges. Just the front cover is just so gothic and beautiful. I know, again, 
hardly anything about this. It just says the tale of dark romance on here. My sister who I went to two friends with earlier today, I had told her I got this copy and she picked it up and she has already read it before I did, but she enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. And then I mentioned I got Kindle books. So I got this one. I actually started reading it last night. Hello Girls by Emily Henry and Brittany Cavallaro. I'm probably butchering her last name. Hannah from our pod, shout out Hannah. Because she's the one that turned me on to Emily Henry and I absolutely love he Emily Henry's book. They're just so positive and empowering and I love the romance in them. So I started reading Hello Girls last night thinking that this was gonna be the same kind of lighthearted thing. It is supposed to be YA because the age group of them is like, I think they're teenagers. And and it was dark. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. I was like, wow, this is a turn. I wasn't expecting an Emily Henry book to start out that way. I got through the first few chapters and I'm probably going to continue reading that one in bed tonight. And then I got a book called Lover by B. Northwick. And Lover is actually a companion novella to a book that was released on Halloween 2023. The Cruel Dark by B. Northwick was the name of that book and B. Northwick is a debut author, an indie author, and she has such a cool vibe over on her Instagram feed, so definitely check her out. Such a talented writer. The Cruel Dark was one of my favorite books that I read last year. It is a dark, a spicy dark romance set in like the 20s and 30s at this crumbling estate. There's some mythological stuff in there. There's a lot of like psychological horror kind of aspects to it. But then again, it also has like this spicy romance part of it that I was not expecting to love so much, but it was so good. There's a couple twists at the end where you might suspect one of them is coming, but the other one I had no idea, but it, it was so much fun. So I definitely recommend that one. So The Cruel Dark, I have it on my bookshelf over here. So Lover by B. Northwick, the companion novella. It's just a different POV. Probably start that one tomorrow and give it a read. And then then I'll let you know what I think. And then the last one that I have on Kindle, I got this one a little while ago, but it is by an author that my friend Tessa turned me on to. So Tessa gifted me a copy of a book called The Elegance of the Hedgehog, which was a beautiful, beautiful read. I sobbed like a baby. The author had another book come out called Gourmet Rhapsody, which I really enjoyed. I didn't like it as much as the Elegance of the Hedgehog, but Gourmet Rhapsody was so entertaining. Muriel Barbary is a French author. A lot of her character depictions are pretty negative, like a lot of unlikable people, but they're real people, raw people. She just writes these characters whose lives intermingle in such an interesting way, and a lot of the ideas that she talks about are so, they're so nuanced, like I, I haven't read anything like it in other authors. Definitely a really unique writer, but such beautiful writing, and I think the translator did a fantastic job conveying the beauty in her writing. So this novella that I got on my Kindle by Muriel Barbary is called A Single Rose and I know nothing about it and I hope that there's going to be unlikable, you know, grumpy characters in it. Her book covers, check them out, they're so beautiful. Like Gourmet Rhapsody, gorgeous. Elegance of the Hedgehog, gorgeous. A Single Rose, it's, it's so simple and beautiful. It's more of like an artistic kind of literary fiction, kind of that style of writing. I'm sure I'm going to like it, but I'll read that one too since it's shorter. And that's all I have for my book haul, ebook and physical book. Now I get to start this challenge of trying to figure out what the hell I'm going to read next because honestly after getting through Throne of Glass, Akatar, and Crescent City again, this has been multiple rereads, I have no idea what to read. So I had so much fun today. I hope you found some books in there that have piqued your interest and maybe it's something out of your comfort zone that you're willing to try out. So I hope that gave you a few more ideas of something fresh to pick up. Tune in soon because I'm going to post a video on what I decide to read next. So thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.